Hello guys, I am going to make an installation guide to help you install Polar, that's P-O-L-R 2.0. Let's start off here by going over to vulture.com, that's V-U-L-T-R.com, register for an account if you do not have one. You may need to link a credit card. Don't worry, this is how servers run. You pay for them. Servers are not these magical free things. You don't just get a cloud and just run the world, okay? Servers cost money, believe it or not. We're going to go ahead and uh, simply click on your servers tab, click your blue uh, deploy new server button, and now we are going to select Toronto, Canada. This is a great place to host a URL shortener. Let's uh, drop down Ubuntu and let's go with 18.10. It's the latest version. $10 a month. What's the big deal? Like, really, if you don't feel like you can afford $10 a month, okay, fine. You can go down. But like 2 gigs of RAM and your, your CPU, that's great. If you can afford the $20 a month, definitely go with this. I mean, it really just depends on how you're looking to scale this. Keep in mind, you can always start off with the $10 a month plan and then upgrade to $20 a month later. I am going to start with $20 a month. Why? Because I want my 4 gigs of RAM and I want the two virtual CPUs here. Anyway, let's go ahead and move on here to deploy the server. But first, let's call it... I don't know, just call it something like haha.r4p3.net. So we're going to deploy this. And as this is deploying, it's going to take a little bit here to install, but I'm going to wait for just a minute and then I'm going to walk you through getting your Polar server set up. Okay, so let's click on our server and we will be copying the IP address. From there, let's launch PuTTY, that's P-U-T-T-Y. Don't have it? Go get it, it's free. We're gonna paste our IP address in, click yes to allow this key, and then we're going to copy our password, go back into our PuTTY, and for the username, just type root, right click to paste in, and then hit enter. That's just your password that we copied over from here, and your PuTTY session. So from here, let's go ahead and start off by doing a few basic things. For example, I know that we need to have Apache, so let's just do apt update. And after we do this apt update, we're going to say apt upgrade space hyphen y enter. It's going to take a little bit of time to, to get all of this going here. So I will pause and come right back. So to cover the basics, we need to do a quick apt install of Apache 2. It's just going to get us our Apache server, so do yes. And we also are going to need PHP, so apt install PHP. Yes. And now we need to do apt install, I believe it's MariaDB. Okay, so let's do mysql hyphen server. Yes. We also need composer. So after this is done, we're just gonna say apt install Composer, yes. And I think we already have Git, but let's just make sure. Okay, so now let's do apt install php hyphen curl, yes. Apt install php hyphen json, php hyphen tokenizer, yes. app install php mb string space php mysql and php pdo okay and lastly let's do uh, apt install php 
SSL. Okay, maybe it's open SSL. Um, hold on one second. Good news. Turns out that we already actually have open SSL and we don't need to install some, uh, we, we don't need to install like a PHP extension. So good news is we can actually get started here and do what we need to do, but we should also go in and secure the MySQL server really quick. Okay, so basically we're saying MySQL underscore secure underscore installation, and we're going to secure the this here. So we can do Y for yes, and we're just going to say, uh, yeah, we want the validation. Uh, there are some, some options here. We can do zero for low. Let's go with zero for low. And the estimated strength of the password is 50. You wish to continue with the password. Let's just do Y for yes. Remove anonymous users, yes. Disallow root log remotely, yes. Remove test database, yes. Reload privileges, yes. Okay, perfect. Now what we need to do is uh, we need to create a MySQL user that is going to be used for our POLR instance. Actually, let's just start off by running the, the basic download command. So we're going to say down, uh, sudo su, which we really didn't need to sudo su. This is just in case anybody uh, needs sudo. By the way, if you need that, you can say app install sudo, but every, most people should already have sudo. But in case you don't have sudo, do apt install sudo and then sudo su. So we're in, in root basically. So now we want to just say, uh, let's CD over into the var www directory. And we are going to use a git clone in order to get our polar copied over. Uh, it should be pretty quick. It may take a, a little bit couple seconds or so but I'm gonna pause until it, it's all finished here very good so now we're gonna ch mod and we should be able to should be able to do that there um uh, on Ubuntu, and then we're going to say that we want to install the uh, the composer dependencies. So let's do that. If I'm not mistaken, I remember I remember there being a funny issue. Hold on. Yeah, here's here's what the issue is. If I'm not mistaken, I, I'm going to try to run this, but I think it's going to mess up. Okay, hold on one second here. Okay, so here's a part that confused me. I'm going to run this. This is not going to work, though, because it doesn't have composer.phar. We're going to go back, do an ls. We're going to move this composer file into the uh, polar directory and then cd back into polar. Now we should be able to paste in this command here. And it's going to do its thing. So it's going to go through and install the dependencies. There's uh, looks like there's 69. So it's saying that it's failed. The zip extension and unzip command are both missing. So it's skipping that. Let's um, let's go ahead and control C this, and we're going to do apt install zip space unzip. Okay, there we go. So now let's go ahead and run that PHP composer .phar install. And it's going to go through. It does tell you not to run composer as root super user. You know what? Between pseudo suing and running these commands or, or running this straight as root, you're you're trusting someone. Okay, so no matter what, they want you to pseudo sue it into your root user to install this. If this is just your URL shortener server. There's no issue. There's no risk really with doing this. And yeah, keep in mind, this is like my third time going through setting up Polar. That's P-O-L-R. It's a slight headache. 
because there's a few things you have to do that documentation does not tell you. So I am trying to cover all of those gaps in the documentation. Unfortunately, a lot of documentation kind of leaves you guessing to know what you have to do to really get everything set up. For example, this documentation doesn't tell you you will need to create your own unique uh, MySQL user because MySQL is not just going to let you go in as root with um, w with the framework that's used. And we'll see that later on, but as soon as these uh, all, all of these, what, like 60-some 60, 60 dependencies install, then I'll go ahead and, and continue on with getting you set up with your Apache config so you can hopefully get your server up and running to, to allow for URL shortening. Now, I'm doing this just for demonstration purposes. If, for example, you own r4p3.net and you have this set up with Cloudflare, which I highly recommend, then we're going to add an A record for r4p3.net domain with the name haha, -ha, and we're going to have the same record haha -ha, point to this IP address, which matches up with your IP address for your server. So I, I know that's kind of uh, just a little bit of extra info for you. But now what we need to do is we're going to need to go into our Apache config, and uh, we're going to look inside of our sites enabled, and we're going to create, uh, we're going to put in special uh, virtual host information. So that way we're calling our, our polar directory when we load our, when we load the website. So I'll show you how to do that in just a second here. Okay, so we are going to CD into our ETC, Apache 2, Sites Enabled, and we are going to simply open up our default config with nano. From here, we're just going to look over all of these, uh, all, all of these settings, and it looks like we're actually just going to wipe out this config here, so hold control and keep uh, holding K all the way down and we are going to uh, copy and paste over a new config and for the server name we are going to actually replace this with haha.r4p3.net uh, same here for the um for this haha.r4p3.net so the document root is going to indeed call through there and we should be able to just save this so we're gonna do control O, save, control X, and we may need to make sure that mod rewrite is enabled. So just type A2 and mod space rewrite. So that should get that enabled. We are going to have to restart our Apache 2. And from there, we are going to have to create the database. So we're gonna have to MySQL uh, space hyphen P and that password that you would have set earlier, hopefully you remember that, we're gonna say create database P-O-L-R. So that's good. We do need to create a user. And so in creating a user and assigning it the permissions to access the POLR database, I'll show you how that works. So for creating the user, we're going to just do create user asphyxia at localhost identified by r4p3net. That's a password. That's a username. Localhost is simply this machine that we're on. Paste it in there. So this should work. Perfect. So it needed eight characters. I remember that now. Anyway, let's, uh, since we have our user created and we need to grant this user permissions to the POLR database, we're going to go ahead and use the grant, uh, the grant SQL. So now we are going to grant all permissions. And instead of DB1, we're going to say polar P-O-L-R. And this is going to grant all permissions on the polar database to asphyxia. There we go. We've granted all permissions. If we wanted to, instead of, say, grant all, we could say grant select and, and you know, just basically grant each individual permission. And then 
also, if we wanted to, we could give max queries per hour to the user. And, and of course, this is all found in the MySQL reference. You can glance at that. I'll attach this documentation. But uh, anyway, what we're going to do is, is move along here to take a look at the environment setup. And what that's going to do, hold on one sec. Now, since we granted the user permission and we created the user, we're also going to say flush privileges. There we go. So th that's just kind of in case things, f for whatever reason, didn't work out. Um, without the flush privileges, just being safe. Now we need to go back over to our var ww and look inside polar. We're going to list all inside of here. And we should find a .env file. So it's the .env setup. Oh, there it is. So we're going to copy the .env.setup over to .env. Now I have set up the, the DNS, or I'm sorry, the DNS HTTP proxy through Cloudflare. This is going to allow us to run it through the, uh, the, the SSL that's set up on Cloudflare. And we can always at any time set the SSL up back over here on our server side. So at least the client side is going to be protected when you're logging in on Wi-Fi or, or whatever, for example. So our database host is indeed localhost. Database port is 3306. Root. Database password looks good. Database name looks good. Application name looks good. The protocol, we will switch this over to this. But before we continue with all of this, let me just give you one, one really important tip. And I, I know you're going to thank me because I've made this mistake before. If we look here at this .env file, you're going to notice that it's under the ownership of root. Let me tell you what, okay? Um, we want this to be under the ownership of www.data also here. And so in order to do that, if you remember up at the top of our installation, we, we went ahead with like a, a chmod command. So let's actually just go back out to our var ww and let's say, um, let's say chmod uh, that 755 and then let's also do the, the change owner there. So now if we pull, go back into polar and we list everything, we're gonna see our .env has this uh, data, the www data ownership. This makes me feel way more comfortable proceeding with the setup. So definitely listen to me and, and you know, might as well just reload, just refresh the page because th this thing is a little bit touchy. The database username is, as we set up earlier, Asphyxia. Database password is R4P3Nets. And the database name is indeed Polar, the P-O-L-R. And the application name, we can leave that as Polar. The application protocol, we want to say HTTPS, and the application URL is going to be haha.r4p3.net. So it says do not include this. Uh, we can enable advanced analytics. I think that is cool to just to see what's all going on. And shortening permissions, let's say only logged in users for the public interface. Um, we, we can redirect the index page to a redirect URL, and then the 404s, that's going to be redirect uh, to a URL, and we're just going to go with the, the login. So the redirect URL that we're going to use is going to be ha 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 r 4 p 3net this way, anybody that goes to disable short links or 404s or public interface, they're just going to be redirected to, um, they're all just going to be redirected to login. Okay. So we can use base 62 like that, but personally, I prefer the pseudo random strings. Um, they are longer, but they're less predictable. I mean, you don't have to do that. Totally up to you. Um, it, yeah, it doesn't really matter. Uh, URL ending base, we could say 62 lowercase or 32. 
it just really whatever, whatever you want. So this has no effect if you choose to use pseudo random endings. So this doesn't even matter actually. And if you choose the pseudo, you will not have the option to use counter based ending. Perfect. Okay, that's great. So I mean, yeah, we're just using pseudo random. It's a little bit safer to do that. Uh, the admin account settings, we're going to create a, a notepad document. All right, so for our admin username, I'm going to do asphyxia for admin email, admin at r4p3.net, admin password. There. So if we just copy this over, and then, you know what, I'll just... I'll just type it out, I guess. You could put in an SMTP server if you wanted here. This is only for email verification or password recovery. We're gonna keep this off. Anonymous API, um, leave that alone, off. Registration is gonna be disabled. Restrict registration, that's if you enabled registration. Do not require reCAPTCHA. You could require reCAPTCHA for registration if you put in your site key and whatnot. And then we're gonna say Midnight Black. So we should be able to install this. We could go ahead and, and shorten google.com. And now we have a, a shortened this and go. Boom. And now if we come back over here, we can go into our dashboard uh, going to admin or settings or links and we can look at the clicks and it's pretty cool you can even see like where people are from it, really cool uh, full featured url shortener a little bit of a pain in the ass to set up but hopefully with this tutorial you know how now